All right, hi everyone. Um, thanks for joining us for another Blues From Home Q&A. Uh, very lucky to be joined today by Cassie Bora. Cassie is a member of our NBL1 women's side and our uh, Youth, League, uh, Youth League 1 now and, and Youth League 2 championship winning team, reigning champions. Um, most of you will know Cassie. She's also a, a, a coach in our junior program, coaches in our development programs. Um, she's just heavily involved in, in the fabric of, of what makes Frankston basketball, Frankston basketball. And um, we, we love her at, at Frankston basketball and, and we're really lucky to be joined by her today to have a chat about her pathway to the US. So Cassie, thanks very much for jumping on with me today. No problem at all. Thank you for that amazing intro. <laughs> no problem, you deserve it. So. I guess what we want to touch on today a little bit, and we've been using these Q and A's as an opportunity, not just to, to tell your story, but also to, to talk about, you know, your profile and, and what you've been doing. And, and I think it's an important story to tell because the, the U S college pathway is, <clears throat> is obviously a really popular pathway for athletes and a really, um, I think a really important one for Australian athletes still. Um, obviously the latest situations meant that that's been thrown into a bit of disarray, but I think hopefully things will get back to normal and that pathway will still be a really good pathway that we want to continue to um, explore for, you know, opportunities for our juniors and resource it however we can, make sure that the information that they need is available to them because sometimes it can be a bit tricky getting that information. Um, we were lucky to have Damien Smith from Australia Basketball, Basketball Australia Pathways, excuse me, um, on for a QA and a in the last block of Blues from Home. Um, and he told us about things from an administrative perspective, but I'm really interested on in getting your thoughts now as someone, um, you know, who, who thankfully is about to go over about what that process has been like with you. So we'll backtrack, we'll go back and I want to start from the beginning. So you, you don't have to go right back, but you can tell us where you started playing basketball and to take us up to the point where college became um, something you realised you wanted to do. Yeah, so I've been at Frankston since I was at bottom age 12 <laughs> and um, I've always loved the sport. It was something that like really like was important to me. I've always like full on played like every week. I never miss a training or whatever. If I felt like I missed a training, it was like <laughs> I missed something of myself. But um, I first brought, I got introduced to the idea of college in under 16s from my coach Cameron McCormick. And he came up to me and he brought up the idea saying that like, I actually have a real good shot of like having a great like career up there. He thinks that like back then even that like my worth ethic and like my talent would get me far. And I never thought of it before and he brought it up and I was just like, oh, okay. So it just, it stuck in the back of my mind for a couple of years. Cause it was just the idea of leaving the family, leaving my friends. It was, you know, it's a hard decision to think about like leaving for four years. But um, it was year 11, so I was bottom age 18s, bottom age 18s, where I made this, the decision. I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to go. So that's when I started off my process. And um, I started, well, I, with Youth League, our games were filmed. So for anyone that wants to, like, become a, like, want to go to college, make sure you get a couple of games filmed so you can have a couple of highlights. So I made a couple of videos. I wrote like a bibliography. I wrote a letter and I sent them out to some coaches just to get the word out there that I wanted to, you know, do it and like see what the response would be. And it was last year, um, my, our assistant coach, Brent Andrews uh, for NBL one, his sister was a coach of Cameron university. And I didn't know, he knew I wanted to go. And um, he went off and he sent her my highlight video and said, oh, check out this kid. Like she works hard and she's like, I think she'll fit in well. So that happened and she said, oh my God, yes, please like give her my number. I want to get in contact with her. So he sent me a message saying, here, here's a number for a college. Um, she's really great. It's actually my sister. <laughs> and like, so I got in contact from like them, from him and it was like, I'm really grateful for Brent for doing that because, you know, it's, it's, I ended up choosing that college over the other ones. So I got in contact with her in 2019, around April, May. I think that was when I first got in contact with her. And um, we've just been kept in contact throughout that whole year. 
she always kept in saying, oh, how are you going? Like, oh, and she brought up a couple more points of like about the school and she was just lovely. She wanted to meet my parents. She wanted to like see the family, see where I came from, you know, because culture and like is really important for her over there. So, and that's what made me draw into that college more really was because, you know, I'm a, I've got a close family. I want to be like, feel like I'm not an outsider. I want everyone to be like close, like at Frankston, like everyone at Frankston's close as well. That's why I love the club so much. So I felt like when it came to choosing between colleges, I looked at them all and then just Cameron just seemed to be the one that like drew me in most. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably my <laughs> whole thing about it. <laughs> yep. No, that's good. So a couple of points I want to focus on there. <clears throat> Um, and for those that aren't aware, Cassie's signed to go and is going over to Cameron University, which is in Oklahoma. That's a Division Two, I believe, NCAA Division Two school. So a really, really high standard, um, not only basketball, but education as well, which is which is obviously a big part of what you're going over for. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they're in the Lone Star Conference, Division Two Lone Star Conference. Yeah. So a really strong, that's a really strong conference. You'll be playing against a lot of um, schools in Texas as well or... Sorry, yeah, you were playing against some schools in Texas, um, West Texas, uh, West Texas A&M, which is where our import from last year, David Chavlovic, uh played. So yeah, that was that was fun um, to sort of have that little connection there. That, that he'd obviously played a lot against Cameron. Um, it's uh, it is a really good standard conference of like basketball. I've seen a bit of it. I went to JUCO in. in uh, West Texas, which is where, um, yeah, West Texas A&M is. So we would watch A&M games pretty regularly. And, um, yeah, it's a terrific standard. And it must be very exciting um, for you to be now heading over. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. But first, I just want to touch on a couple of points that I think are really important and I think are really um, critical for our juniors to understand. Because they probably look... Sometimes there, there is a bit of a misconception. They probably look at you... Um, and some of our other NBL1 players and youth league players and just think, oh, you know, they're just absolute superstars, which you are. And they probably just think, oh, they, they, they probably just got, you know, recruited. You know, the phone would just be ringing and, and American colleges probably just found them and reached out to them. And um, I think it's important to press on the fact that you, you basically, you took control of the situation. You said, no, I want to go to college. Um, that's a pathway I want to explore. So I need to start looking at what classes I'm taking to make sure I'm eligible through the NCAA Clearinghouse. Uh, I, I need to get highlight tapes. I need to make sure I'm playing a standard and I'm working hard enough to be able to play a standard that the highlight tapes are going to be recognisable, you know, so big V Youth League, things like that. Um, and then you put the highlight tapes together yourself and, and essentially contacted schools yourself. You obviously had a good connection through Brent and his sister that ended up you know, working out for you. But had that not have happened, you would have still had offers and maybe had opportunities to go over regardless. So um, I think that's that's really important that not every kid gets recruited. Them, like they don't have to just sit there and wait for the phone to ring. That's, that's a really important fact. If you want to go, um, there's a lot of schools over in the US and, and that you can cold call and contact and make it happen if you want it bad enough. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. It's um, colleges and coaches, they look out for those kids that contact them because they they feel like like contacting others, like they want to see who actually wants to go. So if you write a letter explaining who you are, what position you play and why you want to go to college, that really stands out to them. So 100% do that. You don't have to be like recruited by them. Like they, they don't have to contact you. You can contact them if you want. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. I think a really good message to send. Um, so I guess what I want to talk about next, and I don't have a, a slate of questions to really ask you. I just wanted to discuss <laughs> the last six to 12 months um, because I remember when you told us that you'd signed. Um, it would have been last year or was it earlier this year? It would have been late last year maybe? Yeah, December. Yeah. December last year. So just before we broke for Christmas, I think you sort of, we found out that you'd signed and, and obviously that was really exciting. Um, you know, we, we sort of planned to, to not have you as a part of probably the youth league squad beyond, oh, look, you probably would have still played the majority of the season, NBL1 and, and youth league, but maybe miss finals and things like that. And you start preparing for that. What, what has the last six to 12 months, I guess, been like for you? Obviously, you've gone from preparing to leave and just thinking that that was all going to happen smoothly. 
Um, and then that kind of got flipped on its head in March. Yeah. Now, hopefully we're going to be sending this out and our kids and our families are going to be watching it. And when they're preparing, because they're 14, 15, 16 now, they're not going to have to go through what you went through. But yeah. tell us a little bit about that story. Tell us what you did, not just in terms of staying engaged in the process, really making sure that if the opportunity came up for you to go, you took it. Um, but just mentally and, and also physically, how did you stay prepared and how did you stay on the right track? I think that's really important. I'm not going to lie, it was hard. It was hard because um, I was supposed to leave in the beginning of August and when COVID came around, it was like a big like scare really and I kept in contact with my coach and we just like put it off of uh, like deferring or anything because it was like, we know you don't, it'll, it'll go away by August. It'll go away by August. So I just have to keep thinking that, just saying I'm still going. Like I'm not going to let this put me down and think, oh no, I'm not going to go. So throughout the first lockdown period, I try to keep as fit as I could, not just physically, but mentally as well. I made sure that like I got outside. I didn't just stay in the house. I went for walks. So I did my runs, <laughs> you know, try to keep fit. Cause in the back of my mind, I was still like, I still need to go to college and prove what I can do. So I can't go over there and be, you know, not myself, not like unfit or whatever. I have to keep that mentality. So that was my goal. And um, when it came to the very beginning of August, um, I sat down and had a chat with my coach and school and we were talking about it and it just, I didn't have my visa appointment at that time. It got cancelled, I think, two times by that point. And um, we were discussing it. We're like, okay, it doesn't look like I'm going to get my visa. So we're like, okay, I'll defer till spring start, which is in January. And that hurt. I was so sad. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to have to wait even longer. And, um, yeah, I was definitely not happy about it, let's say that. But, again, I just still kept my mentality and that goal that I'm, I'm going to get there one day. It's not going to go away. I've not lost it forever. It's still going to be there. So I just kept working at it. I still did my fitness stuff. I have a couple of weights at home, so I did a couple of, like, little exercises there. But um, in the back of my mind, I always thought, it's like, oh, at this point of time, I could be over there. And, like, I still kept in contact with my coach and my teammates, which has been lovely. They've been fantastic to keep telling me to keep going. Don't worry about it. You'll get here soon. And, like, that definitely helps. And I've got a supportive family around me, so they kept telling me as well, like, don't worry, you'll get there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I think it was last week or the week before. No, last week. Last week, I get a phone call from the visa place and they're like hey Cassie we're deciding to do emergency appointments at the moment are you still interested in doing one and I was like oh my god yes okay yep I'm 100% so I had that call on a Monday and then I had my visa appointment on the Friday and it was like oh my god everything's starting again so <laughs> we had to get everything sorted all the paperwork I had to change my um, I-20 because my date was wrong and like everything I had to tell my coach I had to get school approval and like those like four days was such a rush like every moment something was happening and I'm like okay all right <laughs> and I'm starting to get a bit excited so I got all that sorted I went to my visa appointment and um it went well it was super quick because <laughs> no one was there they were doing like 12 a day so I was really lucky to actually have an appointment so I got there, got it all done. I came back home and they sent an email saying, okay, your visa should have come in a week and my passport back because they keep your passport and they bring it back with the visa in it. And I'm like, okay, so that's that. So I told my coach and she's like, okay, get your government's approval. So I was expecting that to take at least two weeks because that's what it says on there. It usually takes at least two weeks to be given the approval. Some people went for months without getting the approval. So I was like, okay, so I still have a little while. And I sent the email on the Saturday. And then I don't know how we got it, but on the same day, later that day, a couple of hours after I got the approval. And I was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, now this is going even faster than I thought. Like I thought I still had at least another two weeks to prepare. So that was that. And then I told my coach that and she said, okay, as soon as you get your passport and visa, book your flight. So <laughs> I waited on Friday the next week. I got my visa and my passport back and then I booked the flight for the week after. So I'm officially leaving Friday the 18th of September. <laughs> and who knew? Like 
two so weeks that everything has changed and like all the hard work and like my mentality of keeping positive the whole time <laughs> um has definitely helped and like it's just shown that like anything can happen <laughs> anything can happen in a short amount of time yeah no it's terrific cassie and, and yeah as, as you mentioned you are leaving this friday which is yeah a massive turnaround as you said probably yeah two weeks i guess since since uh, you know your flight will be what two weeks since your visa appointment i think or was it a week no, it'll be uh, two weeks. Two weeks for the visa appointment, yeah. So, yeah, all happened pretty quickly. But as you mentioned, staying positive, making sure you didn't have that sort of, you know, let it get you down, that victim mentality, like, oh, you know, you just sort of write it off and maybe it's maybe it's not meant to be. Um, you know, you don't leave anything to chance. You sort of make your own luck by keeping the right attitude and, um, and continuing to work hard. So, look, it's... Um, it, it's an incredible, um, it's an incredible story. I think, like the last couple of weeks, and even the last sort of six, six to twelve months since you did sign to go to Cameron. So, um, we really appreciate you coming on and, and telling us about your story and, and letting us know what you've been through because it is, it is difficult. There's a lot of ups and downs, and um, yeah, you know, anyone could be sort of mistaken because you're just always so upbeat and smiling and happy. And but there have been some tough times. It's not all been real; like it hasn't all been easy, and it wasn't all just sort of handed to you on a silver platter either. You had to go out and make a lot of that happen yourself. And I think that's really, really important to press on again. The fact that you were able to do that, um, you know, you obviously had help along the way, and you had a lot of support. But essentially, you were the one that made it happen. You didn't sit back and say, "Oh." you know, maybe this coach hasn't contacted me, so they're maybe not that interested or, oh, you know, I haven't heard from Visa or I haven't heard from immigration. No, you, you went out and you knocked down the door basically and made it happen. So, um, look, just on behalf of everyone at the club, at Frankston Basketball, Frankston Blues, you know, we absolutely adore you. You do such a terrific job on and off the court. Um, and we're just so happy for you to be getting this opportunity and getting to go over, um, you know, not too soon, not too far after when you should have been really going up over. So um, congratulations on behalf of all of us. Um, thank you for everything you've done um, during the, the, the multiple lockdowns now. Um, I know you've still been engaging with, with your team from last season, but you've also been working with the whole program offering you know you know most recently doing the hoops fit and and volunteering and jumping on and doing that stuff which is really special for for um to have our senior players still involved in in that pathway and and you're not alone in that there's a lot of great um players doing that abby and 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 tori and and the likes are all doing a great deal of work for us um so thank you very much um we'll let you get back to it because i'm sure yeah you, you sort of counting down the days but probably also still pretty hectic trying to get get everything packed and get ready for friday so um we'll still have you wednesday morning i think you still yeah. gonna be able to do yep so <laughs> the last the last hoops fit session um hopefully it's the last one ever hopefully we're we're done we're back in the stadium by the time you come back next time yeah. and um but yeah no from from all of us here best of luck um and and safe travels and for anyone that's listening tuning in jump on on uh, wednesday morning and and uh, say farewell and, and good luck to cassie oh thank you and for anyone that has any questions about the board or anything if they need help of what to write or what to put down like please feel free to send me a message <laughs> i am more than happy to help because it's a great opportunity for everyone to have a go at awesome yeah thanks very much cassie really appreciate your time no problem thanks All right. yeah.